Have you ever been out of town or away from home and had your router or cable modem crash and you couldn't get access to things inside your house? Maybe your camera system, home automation system, or your security system? Happened to me recently when I was visiting family and I decided to build a circuit to fix that. So why don't you join me on the trip? So what do we need to do this? For this particular project, you will need a Raspberry Pi. Model 3 or Model 4 will work. If you're buying one new, I'd recommend that you buy the Model 4 2 gig model. Uh, it's plenty powerful enough for anything you'd want to do here, and you'd have enough spare capacity on it to do a few other things like build a VPN concentrator. Um, see my other video for that. You need a relay board. This particular relay board was purchased on Amazon. They have a little bit cheaper ones, but there's a reason I bought this one. I'll explain that a little more later on. You need a power supply for the Raspberry Pi, and you need a couple of extension cords, and you need a few little things uh, like some DuPont wires to connect the two together, and you need some general tools like wire strippers, wire cutters, some zip ties, and so forth. If you want to, you can print the 3D case that I designed for the relay board because it will be using mains voltage I want it to covered and protected. So how does it actually work? The Raspberry Pi has the ability to assert a logic level 0 or a logic level 1 on many of the GPIO ports. The GPIO stands for General Purpose IO and that means that they can be used for either input or output on the device. So we're using two of those, pins 5 and pin 6, to control a relay. So what's a relay, you ask? A relay is basically just a switch that is normally connected. This stands for normally closed and normally open. The power flows through the relay all the time, even when there's no power supply to the circuit whatsoever, because this is normally closed. The same is true for the modem. Power flows through here normally. There is no um, need for any type of energy or power to be supplied for the power to be connected to the two of these. We do this for a couple of reasons. The main reason is if something goes wrong, we want it to fail into the operating condition. So that if the Raspberry Pi crashes or you have some weird power glitch or something like that, then it doesn't have to actually hold the power connected to the devices. You want it to, in its resting state, to be supplying power to the router and the motor. So we use one of these Raspberry Pi pins, for example, Raspberry Pi pin six, when we turn it on, and we'll talk a little bit more about specifically what that means later. When we turn it on, it engages the magnet, which disconnects, connects, this bar drops to the normally open, closes it. We don't use the power connection there for anything, but what we're using it for is it disconnects power to the router. The same thing happens here when we turn this on, the magnet connects and it pulls this down and it removes power to the cable modem. So we'll do that for a few seconds. So basically here's what the script does. The script goes out every few minutes, tries to connect to the internet. If it can connect to the internet, great, it just exits. Then maybe 30 minutes later, it tries again. If it can't connect to a particular website, then what it'll do is it will assert both of these pins, which interrupts power to the modem and to the router. It waits 10 seconds to make sure that they're fully shut down, and then it restores power to the cable modem. In my case, I have Xfinity, so it takes the cable modem a good while to reboot, so I have it wait five minutes. Once it's waited five minutes, it returns power to the router. And then once the router gets booted, it waits another 30 minutes and it goes through the loop again. So how do we use the pins on the Raspberry Pi? It's very simple. The Raspberry Pi has 40 pins on a header and these are what each of them do. In this particular case, we're going to use the 3.3 volt power and the ground and we're going to use GPIO 5 and 6 as we indicated earlier. So you need 40 pot wires from pins 5 and 6 and from the 3 volt and ground to the relay board. B 
be very careful when you're doing this and before you power the circuit up check and double check and triple check that you have the right connections here if you accidentally connect 3.3 volt power to the 5 volt rail you will destroy the raspberry pi and if you have your board upside down or you or you miscount at worst it won't work or best it won't work actually and at worst you'll destroy the raspberry pi and you'll be out 35 or 40 dollars so don't do that check and double check and triple check your connections so we're going to be using gpo 5 and 6 so you can see here if we look at the header we can count one two three four we want pins five and six so if you look right here you go one two three four we have them connected to pins five and six 3.3 volt power is easy it's at the top so the very top one the white one is connected there and the ground is the third down so you can see one two three we have that wire connected to the ground and i said we had to turn on the pin Generally speaking, the Raspberry Pi uses a logic level zero, which is ground or zero volts or 3.3 volts to mean one or on. Unfortunately, most of the relay boards that you'll find on Amazon and other places are what are called active low. So this kind of reverses the logic a little bit so that to engage the relay, you have to assert a zero or a ground on the pin that engages the relay and then to turn it off you assert a logic level one on the relay this particular board one of the reasons i like this particular board is it has some jumpers here so you can change whether it responds to logic level low or logic level high i left it in the logic level low position simply because I wanted you to be able to use this if you buy one of the cheaper boards the logic will still work but generally speaking i leave it at the logic level high because it makes more sense to me to be able to say one is on zero is off so if you send a logic level one to the pin then it will turn the relay on and if you put a logic level zero that turns the relay off now why this is important is remember you're engaging the relay to turn off the power because if you remember, so it's important to remember that when you're engaging the relay, you're disconnecting power. So when the relay is engaged, you're disconnecting power and if you're also having to remember that engaging the relay is done active low, you're turning off the relay, you're turning you're setting a zero on the pin to engage the relay, which turns off the router or the modem. So that can be a little bit confusing, but remember what we're doing is we're engaging the relay because it's active low. We're setting a zero on the pin that engages the relay, which disconnects the power. And we'll go through that and I'll show you a little more example of that in just a little bit. Okay. Are you ready to actually see it do something? On your screen you'll see a short little Python script that I wrote. Don't worry, I'll walk you through it all. It's very simple and we will actually turn the relays on and off and you'll see it actually happen. So let's walk through the script. We need to import two libraries. The first library is telling Python that we want to use the Raspberry Pi GPIO pins, which of course we do. That's what's turning the relays on and off. And we also need to use time. Time is actually a library that allows us to delay for a few seconds because what we'll do is we'll turn our relay on, we'll wait for three seconds, turn the next relay on, wait for three seconds. But to be able to do the three second wait, we need to have the time module loaded. We're going to ignore the warnings because we're not doing anything complicated here um, and we don't want it cluttering up the screen as we go along. This is something that we haven't actually talked about, the Broadcom numbering. Older Raspberry Pis, it was common to use what was called board numbering, which was 1 through 40, and you actually use the physical position on the board as the number. We're not using that, we're using what's called the Broadcom numbering scheme, which is where the GPIO 5, GPIO 6, GPIO 23, etc., all those are Broadcom numbers. So that's what we're using. We need to tell Python and the Raspberry Pi that we want to use the Broadcom numbering scheme. So we define, as we talked about earlier, relay one is on pin five. 
Relay 2 is on pin 6. And we need to set the pins as output pins. This means that they will be either high or low and we'll control that. And they will not be used as button inputs. You can set them as inputs and you can do button presses and all other kinds of things. But we're not doing that. We're only controlling a relay. And we may get into some of those on a later video. So we set relay 1 as an output and we set relay 2 pin as an output as well. So here's the meat of the program. While true, which just means run forever because true will never be false, we'll print out on the screen that we're setting pin 1 low and we'll run the command GPIO output relay 1 pin GPIO low, which just simply means set the pin low, which is a, a logic 0, sleep for 3 seconds. We'll set pin 2 low again. We say GPIO output, relay 2 pin, GPIO low. Now remember, these boards are low active, meaning an active low means that when you assert a zero on the pin, it actually turns on the relay. So you'll see that when it runs, you'll see setting low 1, and you'll see the relay activate. Setting low 2, and you'll see the second relay activate. So we wait another 3 seconds, and then we set the pin high. That means put 3.3 volts on the pin, and you do that the same way, except instead of saying GPIO low, you change it to GPIO high, sleep 3 seconds, and you set it the second pin high. Again, setting the pin high, or logic 1, actually turns off the relays. This is the way most of the relay boards are made. So you ready to see it work? Let's see. All right, let's see it work. Should see both pins activated or both relays activated. And when I set some high, it turns them off. Let it run a couple more times. Low turns the relay on. High turns them off. Let's step it up a notch and actually, actually have the Raspberry Pi check an internet connection to Google. So if you look on your screen, you'll see the script is the first part's virtually unchanged. We're doing the same. We're importing the GPIO library and we're importing the TOM library just as we did before. Again, GPIO allows us to manipulate the GPIO pins and TOM lets us sleep for a few seconds uh, to do various, to wait for various things. New here is we're importing the URL library, which allows us to actually connect to and test a URL. Our warnings are still set to false. We're still using the BCM mode, and our pins are exactly the same, and they're set to output. All this is exactly the same as it was in the demo program. New, we have a connection function that takes a URL, and it will attempt to connect to the URL. If it works, then it will return true. If it does not work, it will return false. And we have our loop that runs forever. And here's what happens. Normally in the production system, you'll want this to run probably every 30 minutes, but for the sake of brevity for the video, I've only got it sleeping eight seconds. So it starts, waits eight seconds, test the connection. If the connect, connect again is the script that was, or the function that was above. If you can connect to https google.com, then it says the connection was successful, no further action. And continue just starts the loop over again. So it jumps back up here, we'll sleep for another 30 minutes. If, however, the connection is not successful, then it'll print that there's no connection, it'll restart the router and the modem. Now remember, that active low, meaning we set the pins low, turns on the relay, which actually removes the power. So we do the GPO output of both in quick succession. We set relay pin one, the router, to low. We set relay pin two to the cable modem to low. That turns them both off. We wait for 10 seconds because we want the cable modem to stay off for 10 seconds, but that's the only one we're turning on first. So then we can power up the cable modem by setting that pin high. Remember, 
setting it to a logic one or high turns off the relay which restores power so we give it about five minutes for the router uh, before we turn the router on so that the cable modem has sufficient time to fully boot again this would be 300 seconds not five but i'm sure you don't want to wait five whole minutes to see this work so in the production system you would actually change that to 300 seconds then it powers up the router by setting the pin high and that's all it does then it loops back up here waits another 30 minutes to see if the connection still is successful so let's run it and see what happens clear just clears the screen so let's do python relay.py okay remember it waits uh, i think it was eight seconds in the beginning and as soon as it does that it checks the connection you should see it display test the connection it was a success no further action and it should loop back to the top wait another eight seconds test the connection and it works there is no further action so let's make it fail and actually see what happens so what i'm going to do is i'm going to scroll down here instead of talking to google.com let's remove the e and just add some characters hopefully <laughs> url doesn't exist okay let's clear the screen and rerun the script again it'll wait eight seconds and what we should see is it'll say the connection failed it'll turn both relays on then it'll wait 10 seconds it'll turn one relay off which is for the cable modem to start booting up it would normally wait five minutes we're only having it wait five seconds then it'll turn the second relay on which would turn the router on and then it will loop back up again only eight seconds it would wait 30 minutes to see um, before it tested again so let's try it watch the relays eight second delay here it failed so it took off power to both you'll see both lights should be on and it's waiting 10 seconds before it turns the cable modem back on so you'll see that one of the lights went off waits another few seconds powers up the router and then loops back to the top test the connection there was no connection so it goes through again again of course in a production system we don't do this every 30 minutes or so you see it's turning both off turns the cable modem on first waits a little bit and then turns the router back on so there you have it the next thing that you'll want to do is you'll want this to boot to run on boot so i have this script in the pi users home directory and i made a directory called bin and you can see that there's the demo version that we were using and then just the production relay version so let's actually see how we can add that to the startup script and make it run on boot all right so where we're going to put this is in a file called rc.local that's run on boot in etsy rc.local you can use vi if you're not comfortable with vi you can use nano or any of the other editors on the system this is executed at the end of any of the multi-user run levels so after your pi boots it'll run the script so you can see here i actually already have it in place so that it will if i remove the comment it does user bin python it's important when you're using something in rc.local that you give it the full path so in my case python is in user bin and then we give it the full path to the relay file and it stores the output in the temp folder in relay log now one important thing see this ampersand at the end this is very critical this means run this program in the background and immediately return if you don't do that You'll have a problem and you'll break your booting of your raspberry pi because it'll run this relay program and it'll wait for it to end before it continues the boot process you don't want that to happen you want it to run in the background so this ampersand at the end of the line is critical you need to add that so again user bin python 
the name of the script and it outputs any data in the temporary directory in a file called relay.log. So you do that. And one thing you need to note, if you decide to make any changes to it, you will have to reboot your pod because it loads that Python script into memory and it doesn't look at the file anymore. So if you change the file in the background or while it's running, the easiest way to restart that script is to just reboot the pod. Okay. And that's all there is. Next thing, let's wire it up with some actual power cords. Okay, let's start wiring this up. As you can see, I have two extension cords and I'm going to follow them along. Remember, we talked about the wide is the neutral and the small is the hot. So I'm going to follow these down, pull them together here. One's a lot shorter than the other, but that's okay until we get to the plug. And you can see on the plug here as well, hopefully you can see that, that we have one wide and one narrow. This is the hot, this is the neutral. So let's go ahead and cut these two here and I'll show you how we determine which one's which. I'm going to leave myself just a little bit extra wire here because we're going to want to use that uh, in a few minutes. So let's go ahead and snip him loose. Okay. Those two out of the way. And let's start working on the white one. So the next thing we need to do is we need to figure out which one of these wires actually connects to the neutral. So to do that, we will use, if I can get it in the shot here, we'll use a handy little multi-tester. And it's already set on continuity test, which simply means that when you touch them together, they beep. So what we want to do is we'll put one in, let's do the hot, we'll stick one in the hot, we'll take the other end of the cable, and you'll see there are two wires here, hopefully you can see that, and that one's not it, and well, let's not have a good connection in here, let's put that in a little better. So see how that beeps when I touch this one? That means that is the hot. So let's take our little pin and we will mark this guy with some red. And just to be extra safe, we will mark the negative with black. So again, we'll double check. That one is the small plug, and if you want to, you can. You don't need to because there's only two wires, but you can check that the negative, the black one, is there. Okay, so we've got one down. Let's check the other. It's going to be a little more difficult because it's dark brown, but we'll figure it out. So let's put our connection in here and let's take the other side and let's probe. Got it first try. So this one is the hot and similar to the other one it is the smooth connector. But I think if I put a little bit of black on here we'll be able to see that. I'm gonna actually move that down a little bit because we're gonna trim some wire off there. Sharpie will be visible. All right. So now we've got the hot identified. I'm going to double check that I did that correctly. And it did. And so let's get to work. Set this out of the way. And the next thing we need to do is to strip these wires back just a little bit. Now, you remember we said we were going to tie the neutrals together? So I'll show you how we do that. So let's go ahead and split this down just a little bit. There we go. That 
should be good enough. And let's do the same. Set you out of the way. Let's make our marks a little further down. So, we have this 3D printed box. Let me show you a couple of features that I created in here. You'll see these two posts. The design of this is so that these cables will come in. Hopefully, they will. If I can get it to fit through there. Loop through. And I will zip tie them together to use this post as a strain relief. I'll do that on both sides. But first, I'll show you one thing that I just noticed here. I'm going to have to shorten this one up a little bit. See that? There's a little bit of copper showing through right there. I don't know if you can see that. There's a little bit of copper. So we're going to have to cut this off because we don't want a bunch of copper sticking through on the hot side. So let's trim that off just a hair. strip our cables here. You can use whatever kind of wire stripper that you have that you like. I happen to like this type. It makes short work of big heavy cables like this. Put it in. Pop it. And there you go. Let's do it on the positive. I usually twist them together just so you don't get a bunch of strands hanging up. Let's do the same on this guy. And I am going to make these go down just a little bit further to make sure that I can see it later. So I'm going to stick him through here. Just like the other cable. Now remember, these are the ends that we'll be plugging into, uh, that the router and uh, cable mode will be plugging into. So get him through. Let's do the same and strip a little bit of wire off of here. Easy. So I mentioned earlier we're going to use a little bit of this wire, uh, but before we do that, we're going to take our butt connectors and we're going to connect together the neutrals. Now to do that, we have to check on the plug-in. We have to determine which one the wide wire is here, just to make sure that we're consistent. And so let's get our multimeter back in shot here. Put this back in. And we'll test it. We'll put one connection here. Try to hold it in place. Sorry. <laughs> Cable fell off the table. And while we're holding that in place, we use the other probe to determine so it's this one. Take our Sharpie, make our mark, and we will strip a little bit of this wire again. Now remember this is the plug-in. All 
Alright. So you can see I accidentally cut it too close here again, but that'll work okay. We'll trim this off just a hair. Not like quite that much. These trimmers are so sharp. They cut right through. So let's put him in here. Trim another little bit of wire off. And let's do the same for the other side. It's already mostly trimmed, but there we go. Okay. Now remember we said we wanted to tie all the neutrals together. So we've got to take the plug in, take it through the other hole. Because we won't be able to do this after the fact. And what we do is we take our black wires and we take our little, this is what's called a butt connector. It's just got a little metal sleeve in here. You just push it over one end like this. Use your crimpers. Oops. You see yellow is the innermost. So we just open the crimpers up here. Put in place and we'll crimp. Check it, make sure it's good and strong. It is. So next thing we need to do is a little bit more challenging. We need to take the two black wires from here, twist them together, and get them in the other side of the butt connector. I'll just split these apart just a little bit more. Okay. You want to be a little bit careful while you're doing this. You don't want way too much cable hanging off. You know, so that it sticks outside of the butt connector. So, let's see if we can get these guys in the right place. I'll put them right in here. See, one thing I'm going to need to do is shielding is a little bit much. So, trim just a shade of that shield off. Make sure they can get it to fit in here properly. Make sure that that part that I exposed is not exposed. I'm going to take our crimp tool again. Now we have all the neutrals tied together. That was the hard part. So what we need to do next is we need to decide whether or not we want the black to be cable mode and router doesn't really matter. So let's do this. Let's pull these back through a little bit. So they are out of the way. I should do that on camera, probably should not. <laughs> and now, the next thing that we need to do is we need to make a splice with two hots. These big old cables hanging off the table here that I are not wanting to cooperate. So remember how I told you we were going to hang on to this? Because we need a little piece of that cable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a section off here as close as I can. And then Open this up. Okay. And of course, you can fast forward through this part if it's boring. So, what we need to do is we need to split the hot into two connectors 
so we can connect one relay to each one. So here's how we do that. Let's go ahead and a little bit of a strip on both ends of here. I don't know if you notice that I'm making one slightly longer than the other. Make it a little bit easier to fit into one end of the butt connector. So let's see if we can get this guy to fit in here. Just like that. That's good. What this does, this has created essentially two hot wires for us. Because we need hot to go to both the cable modem and the router. So let's test him, make sure he's good and tight, and there we go. Alright, we are ready to start doing some wiring. these guys up and out of the way. These are the two returns and these the two returns. This is the one that is supplying power. All right. So this is our little um, relay board and I just realized I don't have my screwdrivers in here. So what we'll do is that if you can see on here you have they're labeled normally open common and normally closed this is common this is normally open normally closed so what we're going to do is we're going to wire between common and normally um, closed and common and normally closed this is relay one and this is relay two one will be for the cable modem won't be for the relay but i'm going to have you hang right there for me for a second i will be right back after i get my screwdrivers okay now we have our screwdriver one of the things that i like to do on these is loosen the two that we're going to be using which is the common and the normally closed and bend them up to stick the screwdriver in there a little bit to make it a little bit easier to get our wires in there the other thing that I'm noticing is that I cut these just a little bit too long. We'll fix that. So, the common means the hot wire coming in. So I'm going to crop that, crop that off just a hair. I'm going to crop this one off a hair because you don't want the 110 volts running all over the place. So we'll stick one in here like that and let's tighten it down hopefully you can see that okay it's in there good and solid so now remember this this is the hot wire so it goes in the common in the center so we stick it in here make sure when you do this inspect it real well to make sure that you don't have any strands of wire or anything hanging out because you don't want it to short out on you so let's go ahead and tighten this guy down good all right so he's in good shape so now the next thing and the last is again these are a little bit too long so we'll crop them down just a hair Good size mess on this towel. All right. 
So let's go ahead and we'll put the white one on this side, perhaps. So we'll just put it in here. Press it in really well. You almost need three hands to do this sometimes. So the white one is relay two. Oops. And we'll make the brown one relay one. shape. So, next thing we need to do is to pull these cables back and get her in place. A little bit more. There we go. There we go. All right, for the last step, we'll just test to make sure everything works as it should. The test setup that we have here is two table lamps, one labeled router, one labeled modem, the Raspberry Pi, and the relay board. The Raspberry Pi is running on Wi-Fi. Again, I don't recommend you do that when you're installing it permanently because you don't want it to reboot everything just because Wi-Fi flakes out for a second. Um, so let's see how it works. The startup timeout is designed for when you put it in the rc.local to start on boot. You want to give the Raspberry a few minutes to settle down before you start testing things. I usually set that at about 300 seconds, which is five minutes, to make sure that everything's working properly. And then I'll probably set the loop to be about every 30 minutes. As you can see, the connection was a success, so nothing happens. The other thing you'll notice is that in the resting state, power is applied to both the router and the modem, which is what you want. If the Raspberry Pi were to crash or something crazy would happen, then what you want to have happen is the normal condition to be applying power to the router and the modem. So let's see what happens when it fails. Let's go edit. We'll go down here and we'll change this to something ridiculous. And we will run it again. What we expect to have happen is a startup relay, I mean startup delay, and then you will see the modem and router both turn off, then the modem will turn on, and then the router will turn on, and then it, the loop will repeat. So here we go. The connection failed, so it's restarting them both. There's the modem. And of course you can set this delay to any length you want. I'm going to set it about 300 seconds because it takes a very long time for my modem to reboot. 
and the router is rebooted and then it does the loop all over again. In this case the loop is set very short so you'll see it fail again and turn them both off. Alright, there's one thing I added. Uh, you'll see it in the script if you download it. The cleanup and exit just handles the case where if the script crashes or something happens, it just turns everything back on. And that's it. I hope you really liked this. If you did, leave me a comment, uh, like, and subscribe, and we'll hopefully have more like it. Thanks. So how exactly does the circuit work? We're using a couple of relays to interrupt power to the router and the cable modem. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. You want to know what Daddy's doing? I love you. I love you. I'm trying to record something. Okay. Can you get down? There you go. Okay. You got to get down. Get down. <laughs> Sorry about that.